Holy shit, I can teleport. And with this newfound ability, I can finally do the most important thing anyone ever can. Which is talking about serious issues. We here at Kiwi Bro 64 meaning I, because I do everything, like to have fun and, you know, joke about everything. But there are times where we need to address some serious matters. Oh yeah, babes. We's gotta get political. Most people can agree that the USA is a fine nation indeed. Where everybody looks like this. And we have some of the greatest monuments of all time, like McDonald's, Costco, Costco, and, uh, uh, Costco. But of course it ain't without its flaws. Like, for example, no one's ever addressed that this nation is full of zombies. I guess you could say it's a zombie nation. See, it's a pretty good segue. I know, right? It's pretty good. <laughs> I did a good job with that one. So, right. Uh, Zombie Nation. It was released in the year 1990 by Live Planning and Meldak, who are known for other games like, uh, I don't know, actually. Ah, oh! Mercenary Force on the Game Boy! I bet that's pretty good. I mean, it's got nice box art. I mean, that's what I could say about it. As you probably might recognize this game for is you play as a decapitated head and you're destroying America, essentially. But oh no, there is more context than that. For you see, there is an evil space alien known as Dark Sea who has landed into the desert and has decided to take over the United States by turning everybody to zombies. And of course, you as the samurai head Namakubi has to do something about it because, you know, Samurais do things like they always do. Thanks, Lord Tex, at the beginning of the game. And with that out of the way, we get to talk about Abarembu Tengu. Wait, what? This isn't part of my script that I don't have because I don't write scripts. However, I can't tell you that Abarembu Tengu is the Japanese version. And it's technically kind of censored, but not really. For you see, according to this here interview with the designer of the game, they also wanted to have the decapitated samurai head, but Nintendo said no. So instead, they chose a Tengu. Yes, I know, it's not a biblically accurate Tengu, but I just wanted to show off a drawing I made back in 2019. But yes, they chose this yokai specifically because, number one, is to mock Nintendo, because uh, Nintendo did make a deck of cards that features a Tengu, and two, is to show their tyranny, which, well, they really haven't changed that much. Oh yeah, and also they said they were gonna put this on the PC engine, baby, if they had the time to do so. But that's okay. We did end up getting some Tengu action on that console, and it's from this game. <laughs> Alright, I'm going off topic. I'm gonna talk about the other Tengu game, not this one, okay? But yes, like I said, there are a couple of differences between Zombie Nation and Amberembu Tengu. Like in the title screen, we got this really nice looking kanji, but in the Japanese version, we get a long and throbbing Tengu nose. Oh yes, and both versions contain probably the best result screen music I've ever heard on NES hardware. It actually kind of reminds me of the music the clacks on NES. So yes, upon starting the game, we are greeted to this really cool looking 3D map of the USA. Where it's got all your favorite states, like uh, New York, Texas, North Dakota, and um, that state over there in the left. And what's cool is that you can freely choose whatever stage you want to start with. Kind of like in Thunder Force 4. So yes, each round has been divided into three segments, two of them being stages and one of them being the bosses. What's funny is that there is a fifth round, but that's relegated to the final boss. As for the controls, they're not really that complicated. It's just one button to shoot out your eyeballs and tonsils. Which honestly sounds like a very cool ability. I would love to have that shit. However, there is a problem when it comes to moving your character. I don't know if you noticed the little control pad on the bottom right, but um, you can tell that I'm always making minor adjustments. And that's because this character has the bad case of being on ice. Garsh, if only if this Tengu had a balloon, maybe they could have better traction. After all, it did work for Ohof. 
And yes, you can even power up your eyeball and tonsil power by saving people. They usually come out of the destruction and you have to try to go and catch them. And yes, there is other people, but you have to catch these specific people, not these people. Because these ones are evil and must be obliterated at all costs. But yeah, other than that, it's um, it's actually pretty fun to destroy things in this game. Like, there's surprisingly a lot of destructible things for an NES game. And even the backgrounds are nicely animated. I mean, it looks just like the real deal! Like, this is actually what Texas looks like, I swear! I've seen it! Especially those little mechs, uh, I see them flying around all the time. You know, it's really common here. But wait! Let's not forget the most Texan thing of all time! Our gigantic evil super tank. See, um, I bet you guys didn't know we had one of those. Of course we do, I mean, come on, it's Texas. It's best, best country in the world. But to be honest with you, this is probably the most tame boss in this entire game. Because you can also fight the Statue of fucking Liberty. God forbid, what? This is like the second time we covered the Statue of Liberty. First she's giving us quizzes and now she's gonna kill us with fire. Or just Giant Medusa if you're playing Zombie Nation. Then you got this old dude who's like really jacked. And he's got quite the nice figure, I mean, oof. Every single pose he does is just pure perfection. I swear, I totally want to be built like this guy in a couple of years. Oh, wait a second. I already am. Then you got these snake things in the CREAM ZONE! I I'm not joking, it's what the track is called. The CREAM ZONE. What am I supposed to say? It's the CREAM ZONE. Come on. But whatever you do in the CREAM ZONE, DON'T TOUCH THE CORPSES! Because you'll regret it, literally. And of course, last but not least, the showdown between Namakubi and Darkseed! And it's the most intense boss battle yet! It's so intense that it actually has a background! Okay, I'm kidding. It's really not that hard. All you really need to do is avoid Darkseed's balls while he's sleeping his balls off in the half-ball dimension by shooting your eyeballs and tonsils at him. That's a lot of balls. But yeah, shoot Darkseed in the scalp a couple million times, and then we get our ending! Which is oddly patriotic. I kinda dig it. So yeah, that was Zombie Nation slash Aburebu Tengu. The premise of this game is definitely odd for sure, which is probably why most people even remember this game. And if you wanna track down your very own copy of Zombie Nation, well, uh, let's just say that you need to take out a very small loan, okay? But that's okay, because the folks at City Connection have your back with this Abranebu Tengu and Zami Nation duo collection. Hear that guys, I really, really nailed that pronunciation there. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna re-record that, I'm keeping it in. It's my video, you can't tell me what to do! Where it's got all the cool features, like save state and rewind and all that stuff that emulators can do. Plus a couple of other neat bonuses. But I'm not one to judge. Yet. But hey, if this seems like it's right up your alley, well, you can go ahead and pick it up for the only two platforms that support this game, which is the Switch and Steam. Because there's no way in hell the PS5 can run this fucking game. I mean, have you seen these graphics? And before I end this video, I want to make an honorable mention to a third version of this game. And check it out. It's fucking Air Raider! Where instead of playing as Mr. Namakubi or the Tango guy, you're a fucking aircraft. Woo hoo. Oh yeah, and if you're a big fan of fucked up colors, this is the version for you! So that was that then. Thank you for watching this year video, and I'll see you in the next one. Um, so when is that, the um, what, what, when's the outro gonna do? Like, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Twitch is for, you know, women with giant fucking tits, and quite frankly, I ain't got those. At this point, I just put it at the end of the video for, like, a decoration or something, you know, just to make it a little more fuller, I guess.